is on the air from St. Paul. We welcome you into the Butler Center on the campus of St. Catherine University alongside of hardworking engineer Glenn Thompson. I am Matt Nelson. Thank you so very much for spending a part of your weekend with us from St. Paul, where today the Wildcats host Gustavus and their Gusties. Laurie Kelly is in her seventh season as their head coach. And through their first 14 games, the Gusties are 7-7, seven and 4-3 seven, and three in their first seven in the MIAC. For the Wildcats, 6-8 and eight overall in the season, 3-4 and four through 7 in the MIAC. Last time out for the Wildcats, a loss. That was Wednesday night, 66-50 to 50 loss at home against St. Thomas. Anna Spaulding, she's a good one for the Tommies. 20 points and 8 rebounds in that game. Sam Orth led the way for the Wildcats with 16 points and 6 boards. For the Gusties, their last time out, also a loss. So both of these teams will look to bounce back on a Saturday afternoon. A 63-56 to loss against St. Ben's. The Gusties have struggled on the road this season. This will be their seventh road game of the year. And in their first six road games, the Gusties have only won one of them. So one in five this season away from St. Peter. Tonight, the, or this afternoon, I should say, the Wildcats welcome back Donica Cambrace and her production to the rotation for second-year head coach Don Mulhern. And speaking of the aforementioned head coach, let's hear from him on our Wildcat pregame show. Wildcat pregame show continues as always. Before the tip, we step into Coach Don Mulhern's office. And before we talk about today's matchup against Gustavus, that's in just a few moments. Let's look back to Wednesday night against St. Thomas. And... Uh, Boy, they're tough enough to beat as it is. Last thing you want to see is a team like St. Thomas come out and make their first four three-pointers. <laughs> yeah, they came out and they moved the ball. For their first four threes, it was like playing a game of horse for them, and that's a hats off to them. That's why they're as good as they are, because they move the ball so well. They're very unselfish. They pass the open player. And a very underrated thing that they do well is their passes are on target. So the girls are not having to catch and readjust. It's catch and shoot. And uh, they came out hot. I thought we did a great job of not kind of melting, not kind of folding. And we got back in the game, and I was really proud of our response to that. We talked about it on the broadcast, actually, because I talked about our pregame show where you said the first time against St. Thomas they didn't play scared. That was certainly an opportunity where you could go ahead and be scared and crawl into a hole and, and roll over and look forward to Saturday afternoon. What what do you chalk that up to that your team was able to pull themselves back together and, and, and make that a competitive game um, heading to that, that halftime break? It's a good question. I don't know if I have an answer. I guess my answer is probably Audra Clark, Jackie Radford, and you know, the rest of the returners, that they've developed a mental toughness and a competitiveness that I think is translated to the new players. So I guess the answer to that question is probably the returners having that mentality of no matter what, we're going to fight and have grit, and that transferred over. You know, they got a great post player, St. Thomas, that is, and you've got a young, really good post player. I thought Orth held her own all night long. She is the example of what we were just saying. Sam did not play scared at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, Sam thrived in the game like that. It was a very athletic game. Sam got up and down. Sam had one of her better games of the year, and you can just see she's oozing with potential and just she likes to play, and we've got to maximize her skills and get up and down, and she really battled really well. Let's talk about Gustavus this afternoon in St. Paul. How much do you know about this year's version of the Gusties? Well, quite a bit. We watched them in film quite a bit, and uh, they lost some really good players from last year. On the other hand, they have some really good players coming back and some good young players coming in. Um, they're good, and uh, they're well coached. They've got good balance. Their point guard, Ava Gunzorowski, is one of the best point guards in the conference. And when you watch her, you're going to see she's the floor general. She's never going to turn it over. She's going to always have the ball in the right person's hands at the right time. She never gets flustered. I had a chance to get to know her when she was in high school, and uh, she's kind of that prototype floor general, coach on the floor, point guard, and everything revolves around her, and she's really helping them be a good team. Easier to defend or harder to defend a team that doesn't have that one superstar stat sheet stuffing type player? Because you look at Gustavus, like you said, great depth, great balance, but they don't have that one player that stands out and scores 20 a night. It's a lot of 10 a night, 8 a night, 9 a night type players. 
It's a good question. I'd say different to defend. I wouldn't say easier or harder. It's different in that with teams that have that one or two, you obviously change your defense more for those one or two. With teams that are more balanced, you have to talk more about overall concepts than just stopping one or two players. And the one thing, too, that I'll say about Gustavus is that their three-point shooting statistically is not probably where they want it to be, but they have good three-point shooters, mm -hmm. and there's a difference. And I don't want to be that game where they're three-point shooting and this game becomes what they know it can be because they've got girls in the past that can light it up. They just haven't been hitting the shots that they know they can. Get you out of here on this one, Coach. We just had a nice chance to interact with some of your players out here. They've been a great group to be around. We've talked a lot in our pregame interviews about on-the-court stuff, between the lines, off of the court, in the classroom. It seems like this group has really gelled. Is 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 really kind of that that prime example of what you look for in a student athletes. Well, I appreciate that, and I, I just I agree hundred percent. And when Coach Tim Trent and I are recruiting, we talk about character, 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 character. And if you bring in quality people, all the other stuff will end up taking care of itself. And I know that that's a cliche, but it's a true cliche. The outcomes will occur. They don't always occur as for a coach as fast as what you want, but they will occur. But if you have good people, people have a smile on their face. Emma Nelsons that are the ultimate in terms of unselfish, in terms of keeping everybody involved, being a positive leader, then people's strengths can slowly develop as they just learn the game. So we we're trying to emphasize that. The team culture is critical. We really focus upon that, and I'm really lucky that I have players that want to be a part of that team culture. Great to see you again, Coach, and uh, we'll talk again before the next game, and best of luck today with Gus Davis. Thank you. Hopefully we'll give you a good one. Uh, there he goes. That is second-year head coach Don Mulhern for St. Catherine and their Wildcats. We welcome you back into the Butler Center here at St. Kate's. It's time to honor America with the playing of the Star Spangled Banner. And after that, we'll have starting lineups and the tip. These two teams met in the MIAC playoffs last year. Gustavus got the better end of that one. Their first meeting of 2018-2019 is this afternoon in St. Paul. Let's send it downstairs. And as I mentioned, we'll honor America and have the starting lineups and the tip. Cats and Gusties on a Saturday. All right, starting lineups being introduced here in St. Paul. First up for Gustavus was Gabby Bolin, sophomore out of Winona. Three and a, a third points per game for Bolin. Ashley Faustus on the other side for the Wildcats stays in the starting lineup. Starting her eighth game of the season is the sophomore Faustus. On the other side, a familiar name for Wildcats fans. This is Justine Lee. The senior out of Dawson Boyd High School, Dawson, Minnesota, 5'7", 13 and a third points per game. Good shooter, starting her 15th game of the season. And she got to shake hands across the way with Audra Clark, number 13 in white for the Wildcats. Eva Gonzorowski, 5'5", five five, sophomore out of Esco, Minnesota. She 
He is the captain on the floor for the Gusties, five foot five sophomore guard. Taylor Johnson just introduced five foot six freshman out of Cottage Grove, Minnesota. Paige Rickard for the Gusties, front court player, good one, six footer sophomore out of Comfrey, Minnesota, 11 points per game, and she has now started all 15 games this season for the Gusties. Jackie Radford, likewise for the Wildcats, has started each and every game this season for Don Mulhern. And the Wildcats, Kendall Thompson introduced for the Gusties, 5'11", senior out of Eaton Prairie, Minnesota, just under 13 points per game. And Sam Orth coming off the heels of a huge game on Wednesday night against St. Thomas. That's our dump in 16 points and six boards. Our engineer this afternoon is Glenn Thompson. I'm Matt Nelson, so happy to spend a part of my week with you. As the officials are introduced, Gustavus, their head coach, Lori Kelly, seventh season, seven and seven overall this year, four and three in the MIAC. Gusties have struggled mightily shooting the three ball, 25% this season, but from the floor they've been a very respectable 39%. They shoot 71% from the free throw line. Lee, a big part of that, shoots almost 80% for the Wildcats. 38% from the floor in the season, 28% from beyond the arc, and 66% from the free throw line. Tonight's broadcast is interactive. You can reach out to the booth, wildcatsbooth at gmail.com. Let us know who you're rooting for and where you're listening and watching from. The Gusties take the floor, road black jerseys with uh, black numerals trimmed in gold, Wildcats home whites, purple numerals trimmed in purple and gold. Tip is up, Orth wins it, Radford comes up with it, quick pass, Clark underneath the basket, can't finish off the layup, and the rebound is hauled in by Lee. Gusties push the pace, Rickert sends it back outside, three on the way, that's Lee, rattled in and out, offensive board for the Gusties, and they went up and down with it. A travel, Rickert came up with the offensive rebound, came down, shuffled her feet, and the Gusties turn it over. So both teams come up empty-handed on their first possession. 20 seconds in from St. Paul. Clark drives, strong drive with the left hand. That layup is off. Clark starts 0 for 2. The ball's tipped out of bounds. Last touch by the Wildcats. It's Gustavus Ball. Wildcatsbooth at gmail.com. Let us know where you're watching from. We'll make sure to get you a shout-out on air, whether you're rooting for the Wildcats or the Gusties. Clark, a steal in the backcourt. Tried to get it up top for Orth. Did. Now Johnson on the left side with it. Goes to her left. Tried to get baseline. Step back. Thought about a long two. Instead, it's Fosness with it now. Right-handed dribbles. Orth just inside the arc. Pump fakes. Drives. Got fouled. And will go to the free throw line to shoot two. The first foul of the afternoon belongs to the Gusties. The foul is against Gammy Bolin. Sophomore called for her first. Not yet a minute in, and Sam Orth goes to the free throw line. We're on the season. She shoots 54%. Makes her first. Wildcats have the first points of the afternoon. Second shot no good for Orth. She stays right on her. Season average of 54%. Fosnes was able to chase it down and it poked away. And a jump ball is going to be called right in front of the bleachers. Bolin and Fosnes. It tangled up. Possession error belongs to Gustavus. So they'll keep it. Gusty's trailing by one. Now we're a minute in from St. Paul. Anzarowski. Goes to her left at the free throw line. Thompson, her first touch offensively into the corner. Lee had it swatted away by Clark. Radford was able to tip it for Johnson, and it's a turnover for the Gusties and a steal for St. Kate's. Johnson will run the point. Wanted Clark, nothing there, so Fosnes gets it, guarded by Lee. Now Fosnes, pump fake. Drives, had it deflected. Loose ball. Gussie's come up with it, and they'll push the pace again. Anzarowski into the front court, three on three. Thought about a long two. Instead, finds Thompson. Tried to get it down low to Rickert, but it was poked away by Radford. As you watch along on your smartphones, your tablets, 
laptops or on your smart TVs. Let us know where you're watching from this afternoon on this weekend. Wildcatsbooth at gmail.com and who you're rooting for. Layup is up and good as Thompson was able to find a way around Orth and lay it up and in. Gusty's lead by one. Two to one, the new score. Johnson surveys. Now Orth, 16 points Wednesday night against St. Thomas. Fosnes. Now Johnson. He's guarded tightly by the veteran Thompson. Thompson goes to her left with Johnson. Now Fosnes. Three-pointer on the way. That's way off. Rebound Clark right back up with it. Shots off there. Fosnes, the loose ball. Got the offensive board and put it back up and in. Wildcats lead by one on the putback by Fosnes. First field goal for the Wildcats as Ranford comes over and fouls Konzorowski on the drive and it'll send Konzorowski to the free throw line where on the season the sophomore shoots 66%. First trip to the stripe this afternoon for Gustavus. And the first one's no good, so the best Gonzarowski can do is tie us up. Cam Bryce in for the first time for Johnson. And Manny Wagner checks in for the Gusties. Cammy Bolin will get a breather. All tied up at three. The second shot is good for Gonzarowski. Our first look at Cam Bryce. She'll play off of the bench this afternoon. 17 points per game for the MIAC honoree, Cam Bryce. She'll set up the offense. Down low with it, Orth. Scoop layup was blocked. Fosnes came up with it and put it back up and in. Good start for Fosnes. She has four of the Wildcats' first five points. And the Wildcats lead it by two. Both layups for Fosnes coming off offensive rebounds. Konzorowski turns it back up top. With it now is Thompson. Guarded by Cam Bryce. Now Lee to her left. Back up top, Thompson. Played on a switch by Orth. She spins in. Lost the handle. It's out of bounds. And it's Wildcat ball. Great defense by the Cats. It's Davis. A couple of early turnovers. Wildcats with the basketball. Leading by two. Cam Bryce guarded by Lee, hands it off for Orth. Orth drives, lost it, loose ball. Rickard came up with it. No, that's Thompson. He works it ahead. Gonzarowski, who got bumped by Cam Bryce in the backcourt. It's going to be a foul in the backcourt against the junior Cam Bryce. First foul against Cam Bryce, second against St. Kate's. The other one belonged to Radford, I believe. My memory serves me right. So Radford and Cam Bryce with a foul in peace. Four minutes into the first quarter. Clark nearly had it. Instead left Lee wide open in the corner. Three-pointer short. Uncontested rebound on the strong side for Fosnes. Fosnes into the front court. Nearly lost it. Almost scooped it but was able to keep her dribble alive. Radford for Orth. Emery wanted it in the corner. Didn't get it. Instead it's Radford. Handing off for Cambridge. She'll drive. Top of the key, now the wing, and threw it away. Thought Clark was going into the corner. Instead, Andre was cutting baseline. It's a turnover for St. Kate's and a slow start offensively for both teams. Wanted to mention as well, there will be no live stats available on today's broadcast, so just the live video and audio broadcast. No live stats downstairs. Well, you'll have to rely on yours truly and his chicken scratch trusty method. The old pen and paper. Down low, Paige Rickard has her first basket. The sophomore averaging 11 a game to go along with five boards. Good shooter as well. You can't foul her. Almost 90% of the free throw line as another turnover for St. Kate's. Fosnes had it stolen away this time by Lee. As Jackie again was able to poke it away. Boy, lots of loose balls in this game. Both teams struggling to take care of the rock. Thompson harassed by Cam Bryce. Pump fake. Anzarowski off of the window. That's good. Anzarowski has three points early. The Gusties lead it by two. Seven to five.
418 left in the first quarter. Orth or Clark in the post. One on one. That's always a good matchup for St. Kate's as Clark goes to work and scores underneath the basket. Clark averaging more than 15 a game. Two on one and Radford stole it away from Lee. Radford into the front court with a head of steam. Finds Orth to the basket. Her shot no good. Rebound Thompson. Not a lot of offense in this first quarter. Lee or Rickard into the corner. Looks smooth, but Wagner passes on the three-pointer. Now three on the way. That's short. Rebound. Jackie under the basket. Bradford again. This time five on five. Drives. Kicks. Cambrace three-pointer. Too strong. Rebound Gustavus. Wagner comes up with it. All five, seven of her. Just 12 points in almost seven minutes of basketball as Gonzarowski has another one. We talked a lot about her ability to create for teammates in our pregame show, that she's really the one that facilitates the offense for her teammates, but so far in this one she's done the bulk of the scoring, five of the Gusty's nine points. Cam Bryce, three-pointer on the way. That one's too strong. Rebound and a... They're going to say that it hit the cable in front of the shot clock. So it's out of bounds. It's Gustavus Ball and a chance for a wave of substitutions as Fosnes and Orth exit the game. And Kerchek and Benjamin come in for St. Kate's. We've played seven minutes. And right now Gustavus on top, 9-7 to seven from St. Paul. Eva Gonzarowski has led the way for Gustavus already with five. She averages seven a game. Hink, her first touch coming off of the bench. Oh, down low, and a foul's going to be called against Benjamin as she collided with Wassink under the basket. Foul against Benjamin is her first for the six foot one freshman out of Walker. Yeah, Wassink, the junior. Edgerton, Minnesota, playing in her 15th game this year. So all 15 games, all off of the bench. Good free throw shooter and more than four points per game as well. Clark to the bench, Isaacson in, Nelson in, and Radford's going to get a breather as well. Gusty ball with a fresh shot clock. Quick shot on the way, too strong. Nelson, loose ball, tapped out of bounds by Nelson. Now we've got Maddie and Marnie Wagner in. First time that we've had both of the Wagners on the floor at the same time for Gustavus. Both out of New Richland, Minnesota. And Marnie has played in 13, now 14 games this year. Wagner playing in her 15th, all off of the bench. Marnie Wagner with the basketball. Cross-court pass for Lee, guarded by Kerchek. Swung around to this side. Hink. Olin back in. Starter got a breather. Now she re-enters. Lee, dangerous shooter, has struggled early with her shot. Hands it off for Wagner at the elbow. No good. Nelson had the rebound. Lost it. Put back. No good for the Gusties. Kerchek comes up with it. Primarily reserves for both teams right now on the floor. Lone starters out there, I think, is just Lee for Gustavus. If my eyes don't deceive me, I believe that's it. I think we've got nine bench players out there and one starter. Just Justine Lee. And at 41 left in the first quarter. Floating pass down low. Cambrace, and she got mugged underneath the basket. Two free throws coming up for Cambrace. We'll see which one of the three gusty defenders they want to tag this foul to. It's going to be Boland's second foul. And the second foul against Gustavus in the first quarter. 97 seconds left in this first period. And Cambrace heads to the free throw line. Her first point is on the board. Cambrace averages 17 a game. Some starters coming back in now. Gonzarowski back in. Thompson back in. And our first look at Marissa Gustafson. And I think neither coaching staffs were too pleased with the offensive production of their starters. So that's not often that you see nine bench players out there between the two teams. Second shot no good. 
for Camp Rice. She goes one of two. Gusty ball, and that shot was blocked by Benjamin. Oh, she went out and closed out Gustafson and blocked the shot. Minute 20 left in the first quarter. 8-9 lead for Gustavus. Close one. Cam Bryce off of the elbow. Drives. Layup high and no good. Neither team shooting well early. Oh, this is a four on three going the other way for Gustavus. Three on the way. That's Hink. And a rebound, Cam Bryce. Going the other way, Cam Bryce. He struggled with her shot early. Out of bounds as Benjamin got tangled up with Hink. Hink couldn't reel it in. And the Wildcats will get it with a fresh shot clock and 53 seconds left on the first quarter game clock. Pass comes in as Cam Bryce lost it. Boy. Tough quarter offensively for both teams. In transition, Lee got bumped by Isaacson. Layup no good, but Lee will head to the free throw line. Today's broadcast is interactive, so if you'd like to reach out to us, Wildcats booth at gmail.com, whether you're rooting for the Gusties or the Wildcats. Orth will come in for Cam Bryce for these last 47 seconds of the first period. Second shot rattled in and out, so that's a pretty rare miss for Lee, who's a good free throw shooter. She goes one of two, shoots 77% on the season. Wildcats down just by two. There goes Benjamin with the layup, nicely done. Nice pass down low, and Benjamin finishes it off with the scoop layup. Six foot one post player, great length, great shot blocker, and that time going to work offensively. Into the corner, three, knocked down. First one of the afternoon for Lee, who has four first quarter points. 13 seconds left in the first quarter, and the Cats are down by three. After that three pointer by Lee, Amaker into the corner. Kerchek heaves a three pointer, too strong. Dusty's come up with a rebound, and that's the end of the first quarter. Not a lot of offense in that first quarter, but it's a close one. Gustavus 13, St. Kate's 10, and you're listening to Wildcat Basketball on tjsportsonline.net. We've played 10, 10 more to go in the first half. It's a 13-10 Gusty lead. As a family-owned and operated business since 1971, Goodmanson Construction continues to develop concrete relationships with their commercial and residential customers throughout the Upper Midwest. Questions or concerns about concrete, asphalt, and the company's installation process, check out their website at GoodmansonConstruction.com. Thank you, Goodmanson Construction. A proud sponsor of Wildcat Athletics since all the way back in 1971, the Universal Athletic Team has been passionate about fueling the dreams of athletes and they put all their know-how into doing just that. By servicing and selling athletic gear to local athletes, high schools and colleges, Universal Athletic has dedicated its heart and soul to the support of sports, fitness and health programs in schools and communities. These two teams played on February 20th of uh, this last spring. I suppose that'd be 2018 in the quarterfinal round of the MIAC Women's Basketball Playoff. And it was all Gustavus, 65-38 to win in that one. It was the 22nd win of the season for Gustavus. Remember, the Wildcats snuck into that final seed of the playoffs in the last week last year, but uh, really had a tough time offensively in the first half. Johnson layup no good, and the shooting woes continue for St. Kate's. Bradford comes up with a loose ball and a steal. Wildcats got to get something going in transition. 65-38 was the final in that one last year. Checking to see who the did the bulk of the damage in that one. As I mentioned, the Wildcats only had 11 points in the first half. If you remember, there was a really wicked ice storm that week Miranda Rice who was a senior last year for the Gusties she did most of the damage she had 17 points in that Gusty 
playoff win over St. Kate's. Foul against Sam Orth is going to send Gustavus to the free throw line. Kendall Thompson will head the line to shoot two. The foul against Orth is her first and the first against St. Kate's here in the second quarter. Thompson, 68% free throw shooter. Started all 15 games this year for the Gusties. 13 points per game to go along with five and a half rebounds. Second shot is good. So a good trip to the stripe for Thompson. She has four first half points. And the Gusty lead is five. But the Wildcats got to get something going offensively right now. Johnson has it. He's shooting for St. Kate's in the first half, uh, first period. This four of 15. They got 12 seconds to work with as Radford had to chase it down into the backcourt. Radford with the left hand. Pulls up. Gets something up towards the basket. It's no good. And the rebound for Gonzarowski. Long outlet pass goes ahead. Quick pass. Wagner. Layup no good. Offensive board Gustavus. Lee open three-pointer. Too strong, but Thompson comes up with a rebound. Rebounding pretty even, but so far in the second period, it's been Gustavus controlling the rebounding. These two teams did not shoot well in the first half. They combined for 9 of 29. Radford spins, shoots, couldn't get the roll. Orth offensive rebound. And they're going to say an offensive foul against Sam. As she staggered underneath the basket, they're going to say foul against Orth. Could have gone either way as she was battling with Thompson, but instead it's the second foul against Orth. It'll draw her a spot on the bench along with Johnson and Fosnes. Benjamin back in. Cambrice back in. Fosnes was two of three from the floor. If you took her out of the equation, the Wildcats would have shot two for 12. Thompson drives and scores basically uncontested. Not great defense by the Wildcats that time. They're down by seven. Kerchek, Radford, Clark, Benjamin, and Cambrice out there right now. we got to get Audrey going at this point. Cambrace three-pointer. Ooh, knocked it down. Low lining three-point shot for Cambrace. She has four. Cambrace not a traditional three-point shooter, but there goes Thompson again. Boy, she's got it going on in transition. She walked right past Benjamin and scored with ease. Eight first half points for Thompson and a six-point lead for Gustavus. Floating pass down low. Benjamin came up with it. Had her shot blocked from behind by Gustafson. Now Clark three. Off of the window, in and out, and rebound, Gonzarowski. She's doing well on the glass. Long pass ahead, outlet pass for Lee, who got fouled by Cambrice. Cambrice foul will send the very good free throw shooter, Lee, to the line to shoot two. Second foul against Cambrice. 7.21 left in the first half, and Lee back to the free throw line. Mentioned Gustavus this year for one reason or another. They've really struggled on the road. One in five away from St. Peter this season. And we've got a timeout taken on the floor. Don Mulhern wants one. Let's take one with the players. When we come back, the Wildcats will be down seven, and Lee will have her second free throw ahead of her. You're listening to Wildcat Basketball. Transporting Wildcat athletes is in the capable hands of Northfield Lines Incorporated. Dedicated to ensuring that your travel experience is a positive one. Call to request a quote or to make a reservation at 888-670-8068 or visit their website at northfieldlines.com. Twin Cities Orthopedics offers a full spectrum of orthopedic care to individuals suffering sports-related problems and injuries. Their doctors are team physicians for St. Catharines University as well as Augsburg University, Hamlin University, and others around the state of Minnesota. Visit TCOMN.com and thank you to Twin Cities Orthopedics. Out of the timeout, Lee knocks down her second free throw. She's got six points and the Wildcats trail at 21 to 13. Matt Nelson back with engineer Glenn Thompson. Audra Clark had it stolen away as she went crashing down low. Got it back, laid it up and in. Off of the window, Thompson couldn't close it out, and Clark has four points. I mentioned when you're struggling offensively and it just seems like you can't find it anywhere, that veteran Clark would be where I would be going for my offense. Tough, good post player, can get layups, can get to the free throw line. Let's see if the Wildcats keep going back to lucky number 13. She has it now. 
Stay on this side with St. Kate's as Thompson tipped it out of bounds. 6.48 left in the first half. At Nelson alongside of engineer Glenn Thompson on a busy Saturday for women's basketball in the MIAC. Cross court, Clark down low, Benjamin through some contact, laid it up and in. Nice work offensively. Benjamin's second bucket of the afternoon. It's a four point game. Wagner in the corner. Now Thompson goes to work against Radford. Radford denied her her drive, so instead a baseline drive from Gonzarowski, kicked outside, Thompson three-pointer short, battle for the board, and a foul is going to be called against Benjamin. Rickard came down with it, Benjamin battled, but got called for her second foul. And the fourth foul against St. Kate's in this second period. Still no fouls called against the black and gold of Gustavus. Another foul is going to be called. This is going to be another one against Benjamin. It's going to be her third, and it's going to put Gustavus into the bonus. Benjamin's third foul will put Gustavus on the free throw line to shoot two. So they'll shoot two the rest of the way into the intermission. They'll have six minutes and 12 seconds in the bonus, and Rickert to the free throw line where she is deadly, 88% on the season. And missed her first. That is a very rare miss. Came into the game making 40 of her first 45 free throws. Benjamin's going to go to the bench with the three fouls. Sam Orth back in. And Rickert lines up and makes her second. So Rickert goes one of two from the free throw line. Five point game, but Gustavus with the advantage of playing in the bonus for the next six minutes. That's a long time. And still no fouls against Gustavus here in the second period. Kerchek to the rack. Off of the window and good. And there's the first foul against Gustavus. Chance for a three-point play for Kerchek. The foul is against Rickert, the sophomore's first. And it sends Kerchek to the free throw line. Kerchek playing in her ninth game this season off the bench and has a chance to bring the Wildcats to within two. And a little bit too much adrenaline on that one, but Cambrace got it back, and it's a four-point possession for St. Kate's. Big offensive board for Cambrace, who has six, and it's a one-point game. And Lori Kelly wants a timeout. She'll get it. Wildcats regain some momentum. We have a timeout on the floor. 5.54 left in the second quarter. You're listening to Wildcat Basketball. For exceptional service and selection, look no further than Fury Motors in St. Paul. They're the number one family-owned dealer to buy a Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, or Ram since all the way back in 1963. So much to choose from, and they make the shopping process easy. Also offering genuine service and financing. Visit stpaul.furymotors.com for more information. People's Electric Company is your full-service electrical contractor, one of the Upper Midwest's largest. From building and process automation, communications, construction services, energy savings, testing, and maintenance. Founded in 1922 by William F. Lindbergh and located in St. Paul, find out more information on People's Electric Company at www.peoplesco.com. And we thank all the sponsors of Wildcat Athletics. A little tardy coming back for you. We apologize for that. No baskets, but some back and forth. And this is going to be Gustavus Ball. Down by one with 5.31 to go. We welcome you back into St. Paul. Gustavus with the lead and the rock. Playing as Cambrai stole it away from Lee, but able to chase it down was Gonzarowski. who will push it into the front court. Lee swings it into the corner. Pass was a little tall for Thompson, but she was able to come down with it. Now Lee sneaks in, shoots off of the elbow, and scores easily. Wide open, short two-pointer for Justine Lee. She has eight first half points, averages 13 a game. She's Gustavus' leading scorer. The senior out of Dawson, Minnesota. Clark at the free throw line. 
Tried to get it for Radford. It was picked off. Gonzarowski into the front court. Lee booted it, but she's going to pull it up anyway. Right at Cambrai's shot no good. Radford the rebound. And she'll run the point on into the front court. Wildcats just trying to stay out of foul trouble for the rest of this half as Jackie, oh, they say she traveled. As Radford drove the lane and turned it over. They say Radford traveled. So close game here, but still not really an offensive showcase. 24-21, the score with 4.33 to go. That whistle came just as there was contact for Jackie, but they say she traveled on her way to that contact. And now a foul is going to be called against Gustavus. This one's going to be an offensive foul against Bolin. Or did they say that she stepped out of bounds? Said that she stepped out of bounds. So not the third foul for the sophomore. Instead, just a turnover. Had ten turnovers in the first quarter. Both teams have kept up with that pace here in the second. Clark off of the window. So good. So close to the basket. Clark has six points and pulls the Wildcats to within one. I'm telling you, anytime the Wildcats go stale offensively, I'm getting 13 somewhere around the basket. Three on the way. Bolin, too strong. Whoa, collision under the basket. And a foul against Gustavus as Clark got all tangled up with Rickert. And they're going to say that Rickert fouled Clark as they battled for that rebound. Second foul against Rickert. Second foul against Gustavus as Clark wiggles her right arm back into where it's supposed to be. That was wild. As Don Mulhern calls out his offense, Wildcats can take the lead on this possession. Be their first since they led one nothing, and they do. Clark drops the dime to Radford. Radford averages eight points a game to go along with seven boards. And Radford has her first score of the game, and it puts the Wildcats on top. Again, their first lead since they took a 1-0 lead. Since then, it's been all Gustavus. Down low, swimming through three defenders. The Gusties score it with Wasink. First two points for Wasink, as Kerchak will bring the offense into the front court with 3.14 to go. Kerchak, crossover dribbling. Cambrice wants the ball down low, didn't get it. Had one-on-one -on -one with Lee. Now she does get it. Cambrice around the screen from Radford. Three on the way. Too much on it. And a rebound on the strong side. Wassing. Custies. Thompson past Orth. Dishes. And it's a turnover. Wanted to get it back for Wassing. And turned it over. Nelson's going to come in for Cambrice. I don't think uh, Don Mulhern. No, Cambrice will stay in. It's Orth going to go over to the bench. Johnson as well for Kerchek. He's going to say, I'm not certain that Don Mulhern likes all those three-pointers coming out of number 11's hands. They've been open-ish. But, like I said, the Wildcats haven't been great shooting the basketball today. Most of their scoring has come on stuff around the basket. Clark, Benjamin, Radford, and those down and dirty points. Nelson or Cambrice. She drives baseline. All kinds of contact, and they'll say Cambrice traveled. Looked like Wassing came over to try to draw the tra the charge. Cambrice didn't get much of her, just nicked her on her way by, and they say that she traveled. Cambrice is going to get a spot on the bench now for Kerchek. Cambrice missed the Wednesday night game against St. Thomas and is such a gifted offensive player, but so far in this first half has been forcing it a bit. But she is one of those players that you can blink and she's on you with 12 points just that quickly. Gustafson tried to get it down low and Nelson I think got a hand on it. It'll stay with Gustavus. They'll have 12 seconds left to work and 2.13 on the game clock. Hope you're enjoying your weekend. Gusties and Wildcats here from the Butler Center. I think only five more broadcasts after this one today from St. Kate's in 2019. The spring of 2019 that is. Outside, three-pointer. That's short for Gustafson. Rebound, Wasink, and she puts it back up and in. Offensive board for the Gusties and a putback for the junior. Puts the Gusties on top by three, 28 to 25. Clark to the basket. She got fouled and couldn't finish off the layup, but Audra's going to get two free throws. 
Gustafson called for her first foul. And Clark will walk over to the free throw line, the senior out of Kenyon, Minnesota. Has two free throws coming up. She can pull the Wildcats back to within one on this trip to the line. Now Cambrice comes back in. Nelson back to the bench. Looks like Fosnes will come in as well after this second free throw from Clark. And she makes both of them. Boy, those are big free throws. Beat a dead horse here, but I just get the feeling this is an Audra Clark kind of game. Lots of contact. Lots of stuff in the post. As Cam Bryce swats it out of Lee's hands out of bounds. But I yeah, just get a feeling this is a game where somebody like Clark could put in a pretty good day at the office at the free throw line with all the contact there is out there today and as good as she is in the post. Into the front court, Lee has to chase it down. She got behind Fosnes and laid it up and in. Big first half for Lee. She's in double digits, leads all scores with 10 points. Wildcats down by three. Radford takes a good long look. Now one dribble. Clark back low for Radford. A little give and go. Radford got bumped, lost it. Gustafson comes up with it. Gustavus looking to push the pace. It's Thompson who had it poked away by Clark. Gusties will reset five on five with a minute 21 left in the second quarter. Stay tuned at halftime. We'll have our Wildcat player profiles for you. Great interviews, uh, great conversations. We'll get to know more about Emma Nelson and Jackie Radford. So don't miss that at the half. We'll have great conversations with both of those Wildcat student athletes. Down low, Cameras blocked the shot of Wassink, but fouled in the process. So they're going to say the third foul against Cam Bryce, and I'm sure Coach Mulhern would have liked to have avoided that third foul in this first half, but it is the third against Cam Bryce, and it puts Wassink at the free throw line. First one's a bullet off of the back iron. Wassink's had a good first half, four points. That's her season average. So halftime, it's the Emma Nelson and Jackie Radford show for you here on our Wildcat telecast. Second shot's good for Wassink. She's got five. Wassink goes one of two. And Gustavus goes up by two buckets. Jackie tried to get it to Radford in the post. Did Kerchek. It was tipped away. There's been all kinds of deflections and all kinds of passes that aren't quite crisp enough to find their mark. And it just has not been polished offensively for either team. There goes Audra to the basket. Off of the window. Nicely done. Audra Clark now matching Lee for the game high in scoring. She's got 10. I think all 10 minus the two free throws. So eight of them have come on that left-handed layup off of the window. Rebound Clark. She's taking over the later stages of this first half and she got fouled from behind in transition. Thompson, her, fir fir her first foul and the fourth against Gustavus. 37 seconds left and a fresh shot clock of 30 seconds for St. Kate's. Amaker in. Cambrice out. Audra Clark has absolutely, for St. Kate's, taken over these last five minutes. And this game, I, I tell you, it looks like it was tailor-made for number 13. Radford had it, lost it, stripped away. Gonzarowski, boy, she is a pain in the you-know-what defensively. And she got fouled in transition. Two free throws coming up for Gonzarowski. Really good first half for the point guard. She's one of those players, you look five foot five, but averages more than five rebounds a game. Can pick your pocket from anywhere on the floor, gets to the basket, can make a jump shot. Just a really good point guard for Gustavus. But she missed her first free throw. Neither team has been great at the free throw line in the first half. Gonzarowski, 66% on the season, missed them both. So the gusty guard leaving a couple points late in the first half on the floor. 31-29 the score. Boy, it would be something if the Wildcats could take a tie or even a lead into the locker room at the half. Seven seconds left, now six. It's going to be the Clark show. There she goes. Clark to the basket. Left-handed layup short. And that's going to bring the first half to a close as Clark gives a look of exasperation and a clap of the hand. She got a good look. Couldn't finish off the layup. 
And we've played 20 minutes from St. Paul. The two teams will retreat into their respective locker rooms, and the Gusties will take a 31-29 to lead into the locker room with them. But a couple of times in that half, it looked like Gustavus was going to run away when the Wildcats would just stall out offensively, but they were able to muscle their way back into it and even reclaim the lead. They have not led by more than one, but twice the Wildcats have led by one point, but it is Gustavus taking a 31-29 lead into the locker room. What do we have for you at halftime? We'll take a look at the stats in the first half. We'll look forward to the second half as the Wildcats, if they want to improve their record back to 500 in the MIAC, will have to do so in come-from-behind fashion. A little come-from-behind fashion, just down by two. And the Gusties will look to hold on and win their fifth conference game of 2018-2019. As promised, we have two great conversations for you today. The first one is with Emma Nelson, the junior out of Byron, Minnesota. And it's our first Wildcat player profile. Junior guard out of Byron, Minnesota, Emma Nelson joins me. It's our Wildcat player profile. Emma, thanks for taking some time for joining us to catch up. We want to get to know more about you. You're a two-sport star here at St. Kate's, volleyball and basketball. When did you get into both of those sports? Um, basketball, I probably started when I was about in fifth grade, like traveling basketball. Um, coached by some of my friends' dads and just went around the area for different tournaments. Volleyball I probably took up around sixth grade with like our junior or our JO program. So more traveling. Uh, fell in love with both of them ever since, I guess. It's hard to say. We're airing this during a basketball game. Do you have a favorite? I mean, uh, or, or one that you feel, is, is there one that you feel like you're more naturally gifted in and one that you feel like, I got to work a little extra hard on this for? Where does that fall for you? Um, I love them both equally, probably. It's more of whichever season I'm in. I probably go, like, if it's preseason for volleyball, I'm obviously going to work harder on my game for that. But naturally, I'd say I'm probably more gifted in the volleyball aspect. Basketball is definitely the sport that I work harder and train harder for. Um, volleyball, I think I just have more natural skill with that. All right, now stop me if I'm wrong, because I make about 30 mistakes a day. And I've only used 15 of them so far. But did I hear you were a captain on both teams, volleyball and basketball? Yeah, um, basketball I know I have the official title of it. Volleyball we kind of go um, senior leadership roles, I think we more okay. address it as. But basically what, just leadership, yeah. What leadership opportunities here at St. Kate's? Now that, whether it's playing a sport or taking it into the professional sphere, what does that mean to you? What is it about your personality you think that it engenders itself into being that leader? Um, I think just being personable with people, uh, being able to communicate is a big part of a leadership role, as well as being able to have you know tough conversations, whether it's on the court or if it's a personal experience that you're going through, being able to talk through that with people is a big part of leadership. Um, taking responsibility for yourself as well as others. If like they make a mistake that maybe you're in charge of them, you have to be able to take that responsibility um, head on. Do you feel like you've stepped into that role all throughout it, you always find yourself in that role in high school, now here playing at collegiate volleyball and basketball? Um, yes and no. When I was younger, obviously in high school, and then my first two years here at St. Kate's, I had leadership roles to look up to, and um, they kind of took care of me in mm -hmm. that area. Um, who, who were some of those people, those players that kind of mentored you? So for, I can just think of like my college experience, um, Mari Lee from the basketball team, as well as Kennedy Jennings, Lachey Holt, and Alexis Garcia were my seniors, my freshman year, and then um, my two older cousins, Megan and Audra Clark, okay. have both led me um, for the basketball program. And then uh, Emily Harmon and Mackenzie Pepper and Bailey Ossoff for the volleyball program. They've all offered me different personalities and they've given me different advice in each aspect of my game as well as personal experience in college. So. Some of them are still here. Some mm -hmm. of them have gone on and are actually coaching. Yep. So uh, it's not surprising to hear that some of them were, were your mentors. What are some of your goals? What are you working on for the rest of this athletic season? What are you trying to improve on? Yeah, um, improve obviously my game and on the court. Um, but developing relationships with my teammates. I'm going to be here for another year with all of them. So getting to know them on a personal level is a big goal of mine. 
as well as make new connections with either my coaches, um, getting to know them more personally, and having them help me uh, further my career um, for once I graduate, uh, and then making new connections in the athletic department. And we've gotten to know you a little bit better this afternoon yeah. as well. That's Emma Nelson, and this has been today's Wildcat Player Profile. St. Paul. This is Jackie Radford joining us for today's Wildcat Player Profile. Jackie, good to see you. Great to have a chance to get to know you a little bit better. Before we talk about this year, let's look in the rearview mirror backwards. How was it that you wound up playing here at St. Kate's uh, College Ball? Well, I actually started at the University of St. Thomas. I wasn't Never heard of them. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know them. Um, didn't really like it there too much, just in terms of uh, overall um, non-basketball related things. So I uh, reached out to Coach P, who had recruited me out of high school, but who I didn't really pay a lot of attention to. Uh, let's pretty, hope he's not watching. Yeah, let's hope he's not watching. Uh, it's, it happened pretty fast. I loved meeting with him and Coach Care right away. Felt like I was a good fit here right at home. So yeah, I never really looked back after that. It's awesome. Where do you see yourself fitting into this this team, this year's version. Every team takes on its own identity. I think this year's team has taken on an identity all its own. Where does Jackie Radford fit into that identity? Well, uh, I'd, I'd like to think, even though I'm not, you know, you're not gonna see me lighten up the box scores. I, I like uh, playing defense, getting rebounds, you know, being a hustle player, good teammate, yeah. Not true, by the way. You do fill up the box scores, just not always in the points. Right, category. right, right. That's but uh, thankfully, there's more than just points on those box scores. Yeah. It's kind of doing some of that dirty work yeah. that results in wins. And, you know, th that's something I know that, well, I don't know, but I imagine that you take pretty seriously that, that you know that for this team to win, you've got to go out there and you've got to be able to come up with that loose ball. You've got to be able to make that open three point shot. Wherever it is that it fits in, you got to be able to do that in order for this team to get where it wants to go. Yeah. Affirmative head nod. Yeah, I mean, you know, I try to do my job every game, uh, score when I need to score. Um, and yeah, just make those plays that, you know, puts us in a good position to win, you know, which is really all that I want to do. If I swung open that door over there and I brought in Jackie Radford, the freshman, sat her next to Jackie Radford, the junior. How do you think you've developed as a person and as a player? Uh, I would like to, I would like to believe I got a lot more confidence in my game. Um, you know, I'm definitely more prepared, more comfortable here, more vocal as a leader. Um, yeah, hopefully I've improved. I don't know, I would say that I have. Up until this point, maybe your favorite moment is yet to come. But up until this point, what's been your favorite moment at St. Kate's? That would have to be beating Oxford last year to clinch our playoff spot. Hard to beat a playoff yeah. clincher. Do, do yeah. you, I don't know if you watch much basketball, if you consider yourself a fan, whether it's the men's or women's side of the game, professional college. Do you have a player that you just love to watch and you think, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take something that that player does and I'm going to put it into my game. I'm going to try to put it into my game. Definitely an all-time favorite player to watch would be Manu Ginobili from the Spurs. Really? Yeah. I, uh, yeah, you know, he's a, just a hard-working, grinding guy, athletic as heck, you wouldn't believe it by looking at him. I can, I can see that. I Which I don't, I don't really relate to, but sometimes I feel like I make the master Athletic of taking place. four or five steps without getting called for traveling. That's yeah, what I most hero step, my... yep. Reverse layups, you know, being creative at the basket. I try to incorporate that. But... Last one for you. Okay. For this year's team to get where it wants to go, it's got to do blank. I would say the biggest thing is uh, first years have to step up, play very big roles in certain situations. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. So everyone just gotta come every day, do their job, you know, and I think we'll I think we'll do well. That's Jackie Radford.
junior guard on this year's basketball team, and this has been today's Wildcat Player Profile. That is Jackie Radford. What a great conversation and what a leader uh, Radford is for this team. Five foot nine, junior. More than eight points a game, more than seven boards, but I think more than that, you can always see her leadership on the court and off the court shining through for Don Mulhern in his second season in St. Paul with the Wildcats. So a big thank you to Emma Nelson and Jackie Radford for joining us on our halftime show this weekend with our Wildcat player profiles. I think that's a lot of fun. I'm sure the fans are enjoying getting to know these student athletes a little better. Let's step aside for a break. It's halftime in St. Paul. Gustavus 31, St. Kate's 29. Tough shooting half for both teams. Gustavus won a 10 on their three-pointer. St. Kate's won a 6. That adds up to a combined 2 for 16. So maybe the team that can get hot shooting the long ball in the second half will be the one that brings this win into the clubhouse. Let's step aside. It's halftime in St. Paul. As a family-owned and operated business since 1971, Goodmanson Construction continues to develop concrete relationships with their commercial and residential customers throughout the Upper Midwest. Questions or concerns about concrete, asphalt, and the company's installation process, check out their website at GoodmansonConstruction.com. Thank you, Goodmanson Construction. A proud sponsor of Wildcat Athletics since all the way back in 1971, the Universal Athletic Team has been passionate about fueling the dreams of athletes, and they put all their know-how into doing just that. By servicing and selling athletic gear to local athletes, high schools, and colleges, Universal Athletic has dedicated its heart and soul to the support of sports, fitness, and health programs in schools and communities. Transporting Wildcat athletes is in the capable hands of Northfield Lines Incorporated, dedicated to ensuring that your travel experience is a positive one. Call to request a quote or to make a reservation at 888-670-8068 or visit their website at northfieldlines.com. Twin Cities Orthopedics offers a full spectrum of orthopedic care to individuals suffering sports-related problems and injuries. Their doctors are team physicians for St. Catharines University as well as Augsburg University, Hamlin University, and others around the state of Minnesota. Visit TCOMN.com and thank you to Twin Cities Orthopedics. For exceptional service and selection, look no further than Fury Motors in St. Paul. They're the number one family-owned dealer to buy a Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, or Ram since all the way back in 1963. So much to choose from, and they make the shopping process easy, also offering genuine service and financing. Visit stpaul.furymotors.com for more information. People's Electric Company is your full-service electrical contractor, one of the Upper Midwest's largest. From building and process automation, communications, construction services, energy savings, testing, and maintenance. Founded in 1922 by William F. Lindbergh and located in St. Paul, find out more information on People's Electric Company at www.peoplesco.com. Wildcat Athletics is proudly supported by the Ryan Company, the Hickey Family, U.S. Bank, the Loeffler Companies, Cone U.S., and the Opus Group. Wildcat supporters this season also include Shapco Printing, Sedexo, Terra General Contractors, the O'Neill Group, ProTech Designs, and Floors by Becker. Other Wildcat sponsors include McGough Construction, the DLR Group, Push, Pedal, and Pull, The Newman Family, Sava Tree, Jimmy John's, and Munchies Frozen Yogurt. Welcome you back into St. Paul. Matt Nelson alongside of engineer Glenn Thompson. Wildcat basketball is back on the air again. 
Hope you enjoyed our halftime show. This week we caught up with Jackie Radford and Emma Nelson, our Wildcat player profiles. And a reminder to stay tuned for our Wildcat postgame show after the game. We'll run down the game for you. And uh, every time the Wildcats come up with a W, we make sure to bring up a student athlete for a postgame interview. 31 uh, 29 year score. Gustavus on top. 60 points scored in between the two teams in the first uh, two quarters in the first half. And a third of that scoring coming from two players. Justine Lee at 10 and Audra Clark had 10. Beyond that, the scoring was pretty sparse and hard to come by. Kendall Thompson did have eight. But beyond that, Cambrice had six on two of eight shooting. The Wildcats shoot 12 of 30 in the first half. Gustavus shoots 11 of 30. So they almost shot identical from the floor. The difference was... Gustavus got to the free throw line a few times more. They were 8 of 14 from the line. The Wildcats were 4 of 7. 22 rebounds for Gustavus to 20 for the Wildcats. 7 turnovers for Gustavus to 13 for St. Kate's. Any time that you have more turnovers, 13, than made buckets, 12 for St. Kate's, and you are within 2 points, you will take that. Back to work. Gustavus has the basketball, and we are underway in St. Paul in the third quarter. Gonzarowski works it around to... The gusty leading scorer, Lee. Boy, she lost Clark and will let loose on a three-pointer and knock it down. Cambrice tr came over to try to close it out. But it is Justine Lee with her first three points of the second half. She's got a Baker's dozen. Clark, uh, pardon me, Cambrice just inside of the free throw line. Got the roll and got the shot to go. Cambrice has eight. And she had a wide open three but passed on it. There wasn't much going on shooting the long ball for Donica in the first half. Little contact and losing it was Rickert. Clark comes up with a loose ball, pushes the pace. Donica in transition, drives baseline, got to the rack, laid it up and in and one. Wildcats will have a chance to tie it at 34 as Cambrice now has 10 points. And will go to the free throw line. With a chance to tie us at 34, a chance at a three-point play for Cambrice. Nice pass by Clark in transition, and Cambrice knocks down the free throw. She's got 11, and uh, trails just Lee for game-leading score. What did I say in the first half? You can sleep on a player like Cambrice for 20 minutes, but just that quickly she can get on you, she can get hot, and put up huge numbers. We're all tied up a minute into the second half. Floating pass down low. Tipped out of bounds. It stays with Gustavus. Thompson was double teamed. 34 to 34. Lee drive. Got it down low. Radford and Clark battling with Rickard. And they're going to call a foul on Jackie. First foul against Radford. First foul against the Wildcats in the third quarter. And for as much contact as there have been, that was as uh, quick of a foul as we've seen called this afternoon. Driving to the basket, losing it was, I believe, Bolin. Coming up with the loose ball was Lee. 3-2 strong. Rebound weak side by Cambrice. 90 seconds into the third quarter. Radford spun, lost her dribble. Dope for the ball. Gustavus comes up with it. Goes in transition, tried to get it back to Lee. It was kicked out of bounds by Cambrice. Lots of effort, lots of back and forth, but even on the fast break, these two teams having a tough time getting in their rhythm. Lori Kelly is going to send in Maddie Wagner and bring back Gonzarowski to the bench. Austinus will defend Wagner. Wildcats have their original starting five out there, minus uh, they've got Cambrice for Johnson. Orth defending now in the corner. Wagner has it. Rickert outside, three, knocked down. It's Lee. Lee with 16 points, and she puts Gustavus on top by three in transition. Clark had her shot blocked, and Wagner comes up with a rebound. In transition, open three on the way. Too strong. Bradford couldn't come up with the rebound. Gustavus gets the offensive board in the corner. So Lee goes for Wagner. Thought long and hard about a three. Instead, Lee open for three. Knocked it down again. 
Justine Lee is on fire. She has 19 points. And her latest three-pointer has put the Gusties on top by six. We've called a lot of three-pointers by the last name of Lee from Dawson in this Butler Center. These, though, belong to Gustavus. Park for Cambrai, driving, puts on the brakes. Jumper no good, rebound Gustavus. Wildcats need a stop. Thompson drives, and Cambrice, nice play defensively. Just what the doctor ordered, a steal. Wildcats need this win, trying to get back to 500 in conference play. Clark to Orth! Buckets good and a foul! Boy, Audra Clark has been so good in this game. She got the ball to Orth, who finished it off from there. She has three points and goes to the free throw line for the second time today. But whether with her scoring or her passing, Clark has been really good in this game. Orth can bring the Wildcats back to within three and does. Nice shot. This Wildcat team, with what Radford brings to the table, with her effort, with her rebounding, with her defense, on any given night, if they had Cam Bryce Orth and Clark going on all cylinders, there's not a team in this conference that they couldn't beat. They just haven't shown that yet. The ability to bring those three offensively for 40 minutes and what they bring to the table. But look at the great defense by Radford. Forces a steal and gets fouled. The foul is against Hink. The sophomore out of White Bear Lake called for her first foul. And yes, Glenn Thompson, I heard you off of the microphone. That includes that team up the block. They're in a big game today against Augsburg. Two unbeatens. Clark. Drives, spins, layup off, loose ball. Cambrace had it, lost it, trying to get it to Clark. It was picked off by Rickard. Marnie Wagner in transition. Lee, extra pass for Thompson, guarded by Kerchek. Hink surveys, comes near side. Lee drives baseline, denied there by Isaacson. Up top, Hink, long three-pointer. She stared it down and knocked it down. Gustavus was very poor shooting the three in the first half, just one of ten. They've been lights out in the second half. They lead it by six. 43 to 37, the new score. Bradford to work offensively. She drives, she spins. Now Audra. To the left hand she goes around the screen from Radford. Tried to go pick and roll to Jackie who got fouled from behind. Marnie Wagner gave her a bump, drew the whistles. It's the third foul against uh, Gustavus in this third quarter. And the, uh, check that, the fourth foul. And the first against Marnie Wagner, sophomore out of New Richland, Minnesota. Katie Benjamin will come in for Cambrice. So now you've got Benjamin coming in to run the post. She was very good in the first half. Had a big block defensively and a couple of nice buckets on the offensive end as well. Isaacson for Clark. She directs traffic. Takes a nice long look. Goes to the left hand. Spins. Kicks. Open three. Isaacson would be a big one. No good. And a rebound. Chased down in the corner by Gustavus. Three-point shooting has been the difference in this second half for the Gusties. Wildcats need more defense. They've played well at times defensively in this second half, forcing Gusty turnovers. He'll try another three-pointer and knock it down again. They have shot the lights out from long distance. The latest coming from Kendall Thompson. She's got 11 points right on about her season average of a dozen per game. It's a 46-37 lead for Gustavus. Got to get a bucket. Radford off of the elbow. No good. Rebound. Marnie Wagner uncontested. Wildcats can't give up another three-pointer here. And that's going to be a travel. Good defense by Isaacson at Forrest Ellison Hink into a travel. Orth comes in for Jackie. And Don Mulhern wants a timeout. And he's going to get it. Let's break with the players. 
behind great three-point shooting in the second half. Gustavus is up by nine. 418 left in the third quarter. You're listening to Wildcat Basketball. As a family-owned and operated business since 1971, Goodmanson Construction continues to develop concrete relationships with their commercial and residential customers throughout the Upper Midwest. Questions or concerns about concrete, asphalt, and the company's installation process, check out their website at GoodmansonConstruction.com. Thank you, Goodmanson Construction. A proud sponsor of Wildcat Athletics since all the way back in 1971, the Universal Athletic Team has been passionate about fueling the dreams of athletes, and they put all their know-how into doing just that. By servicing and selling athletic gear to local athletes, high schools, and colleges, Universal Athletic has dedicated its heart and soul to the support of sports, fitness, and health programs in schools and communities. Bring it back into St. Paul. Kerchak has the rock for the Wildcats who've got to get a stop. Uh, well, at this point now, got to get some offense going on and are going to need to get some stops and find a way to lock down Gustavus shooting the three. Clark for Orth. Isaacson thought about a three-pointer. Instead drives it with the right hand. Shot no good. Rebound Wagner. So Gustavus in transition. Lee picks up her dribble. Now Rickert, one-on-one -on -one with Benjamin, drove into a crowd and had it stripped away by Kerchek. Really good, high-energy player off of the bench for the Wildcats is Kerchek. Clark spins, goes to the rack, draws a crowd. Benjamin thought about a three. Instead, Kerchek will try one. That's no good. Rebound. Orth went way over the defender to get it. Comes down with it and got fouled in the process. Great play by Orth. They foul against Marnie Wagner. And Orth used her size and athleticism to go way over Wagner to bring that one down. And the Wildcats need all the effort they can get right now. Because much more of the three-point shooting from Gustavus be problematic. Fifth foul against Gustavus in the third period means it's bonus time. Two free throws for Orth. <laughs> Fourth now with five points. She had 16 on Wednesday night against St. Thomas. So far, five in this one. First free throw good. This is her third trip to the free throw line this afternoon. And she goes two for two. Those are good trips. When you're shooting 54% on the season, anytime you can go and make them both, it's a big, big bonus for your team. 46 to 39, lead for Gustavus with the basketball. Bowling up top with it. Now Wagner kicks it into the corner for Thompson. And this is going to be a, oh, a defensive foul. Is, no, an offensive foul. It is a charge. The foul is against Kendall Thompson. The third foul against the senior from Eden Prairie. Great defense by the Wildcats drawing the charge. Call was a little slow, but it was a good one for St. Kate's. 46 to 39, 257 to go. Bosnes had it, lost it. It's tipped out of bounds. But last touch by Gabby Bolin. Wildcats will have 12 seconds on their shot clock. Isaacson nearly lost it. Orth was there to chase it down. Down low into the post. Kerchek, left-handed little baby hook shot is no good. Loose ball. Last touch by Cambrice. It's Gustavus ball. Wildcats just have not been able to sustain anything offensively. Their best moments were in the closing moments of the first half when they were really riding Audra Clark. Cambrice came out playing well early in the second half, but is playing with three fouls. Gustavus made just one of their ten three-pointers in the first half. Since then, they've been much better, making, I think, all but one they've taken here in the third quarter. Molin bumped by Kerchik, and she knew it. The foul against the youngster Kerchik is her first. 
And 2.15 left in the third quarter. Second foul against St. Kate's. Fresh shot clock for Gustavus. They'll trigger it into the right of their basket. Pass came in right off of Orth and kind of a gimme of a turnover. Herchek, Her Johnson. Johnson carefully dribbling with the left hand. Now Orth. He's guarded by Hink. A three-point barrage in the third quarter has separated Gustavus from St. Kate's trying to come back and Fosnes traveled. She was guarded by the veteran Lee, picked up her dribble, thought about pulling the trigger, came back down, and by then it was too late. A travel for Fosnes, a turnover for St. Kate's, who are still within striking distance, just down seven. Despite that three-point onslaught. Years past, the Wildcats have had those players that could step out and start knocking down three-pointers. This year's team is more of a get-it-done-inside-of-the-arc type of team as Orth comes over and commits the foul, and Lee is going to go to the free-throw line. The foul against Orth is her third, and it will send Lee to the free-throw line, and Fosnes went down late after that play, so she's going to come over to the bench, and Clark is going to spell her. Radford will come in as well. You could see behind the play, Fosnes kind of grabbed onto Lee late after the whistle. And I think what she was doing was trying to brace herself for a fall that she had taken that, that injury. First shot for Lee, no good. And Lee and uh, Rickard, two really good free throw shooters who haven't been at their best on this Saturday afternoon. Lee's second is good. Big afternoon for Lee. She's got 20 points. Last time out for the Gusties, a 63-56 loss at home against St. Ben's. Clark directing traffic. Don Mulhern could keep her on the bench no more. Time to get her back in. Clark for Orth. Orth had it tapped away. Loose ball, and Lee won it. She dove for it. Tossed it off. Audra Clark. It went out of bounds, and it's gusty ball. And, you know, you got to pick the hill you want to proverbially, you know, you pick the hill to die on. And we know the injury history with Clark, and if you got to lose one loose ball because you can't bust on it and die for it, uh, and because of that you can play out the rest of the 2019 season, that's a worthy trade-off. But I think pre-knee injury, Andre Clark probably comes up with that ball. I don't blame her one bit. <laughs> In the end, Gustavus doesn't score anyway, so the Wildcats will keep it. Inside of a minute left in the third quarter. Clark's had open looks if she's wanted them. Instead goes back for Johnson. Her three is short. She got her own rebound, but had it stripped out of her hands, and Lee came up with it. Johnson gave a little bump to Gonzarowski. No foul called. Instead, they kick it outside and knock down a long two. 49. For Gustavus, 49, 39, 25 seconds to go, 20 on the shot clock. Down by 10. As big of a lead as Gustavus has had all afternoon. Kick ball, and the Wildcats... We'll keep it. No re reset of the shot clock. 15 seconds there. 18 on the game clock. So if they wanted it, the Wildcats could hold it for just about what would amount to the last shot. Orth, hump fake, threw some contact. Gave a nice stiff pass to Jackie who couldn't come up with it. 12 seconds to go. Wildcat turnover. Now Gustavus will get the last laugh in this third quarter. Anzarowski, now Thompson with to go. Goes around Clark, misses badly over the iron, and it's the end of the third quarter. Not a great quarter for the Wildcats as Gustavus was able to build their two-point lead into a ten-point lead behind three-point shooting. 49-39, the new score, and you're listening to Wildcat Basketball. Ten to go from St. Paul. Transporting Wildcat athletes is in the capable hands of Northfield Lines Incorporated. Dedicated to ensuring that your travel experience is a positive one. Call to request a quote or to make a reservation at 888-670-8068 
or visit their website at northfieldlines.com. Twin Cities Orthopedics offers a full spectrum of orthopedic care to individuals suffering sports-related problems and injuries. Their doctors are team physicians for St. Catharines University as well as Augsburg University, Hamlin University, and others around the state of Minnesota. Visit TCOMN.com and thank you to Twin Cities Orthopedics. For exceptional service and selection, look no further than Fury Motors in St. Paul. They're the number one family-owned dealer to buy a Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, or Ram since all the way back in 1963. So much to choose from, and they make the shopping process easy. Also offering genuine service and financing. Visit stpaul.furymotors.com for more information. Welcome you back into St. Paul. Wildcats will get the ball first in the fourth quarter as we welcome you back. 49-39, the score. Gustavus on top by 10. Corey Kelly's team got hot from beyond the arc in the third quarter. Cambrice down low, draws the foul. Thompson called for her fourth foul. That's significant because she's been a great player this afternoon for Gustavus. She draws her fourth foul, the first against Gustavus in the fourth quarter, and puts Cambrice to the free throw line. And get the feeling as Cambrice gets the roll and makes her first that if the Wildcats are going to find their way back into this game, it's going to happen inside of the paint with Cam Bryce, Clark, and Radford because they just haven't had much going on shooting the basketball, to say the least. 13 points for Cam Bryce. She goes two for two at the line. And with the four fouls, Thompson's going to retreat back to the bench. 9.47 to go in the game. But Cam Bryce puts a dent in that 10-point lead. It's now 49-41. to Konzarowski. For Bolin. Now Rickert. Last year these two teams met in the MIAC playoff quarterfinals. Gustavus won that one big time. Bradford the rebound. Miranda Rice, such a great career at Gustavus. Now it's a new host of characters. Clark. And they're going to call a blocking foul on Gabby Bolin, her third foul. Good deal for the Wildcats. They get two quick fouls on Gustavus because, like I said, with not much jump shooting going on, they're going to need points in the paint and free throws to come back into this thing. 9.17 left. Fresh shot clock. Johnson, Clark, Benjamin, Ambrose, and Radford on the floor. Radford has it. Tried to zip it down low to find Clark. It was picked off. By Gonzarowski, who's had a nice day defensively. And she was good offensively early in this one, too. Remember, she had five of, I think, the first nine for Gustavus. Arnie Wagner drives, got by Benjamin, got by Radford, and scored. Arnie Wagner, those are her first two points of the day. Puts Gustavus back on top by 10. Wildcats in a hurry. 8.36 left in the game. Radford. Tried to find Benjamin. She was well guarded by Rickard. Instead of the corner, Johnson, three, needed and got it. Big shot for Taylor Johnson. The Wildcats desperately needed a three-pointer. That's their first of the second half. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Don Mulhern wants to talk about defense. 51-44 the score, 8.25 left. You're listening to Wildcat Basketball. Is your full-service electrical contractor one of the upper Midwest's largest. From building and process automation, communications, construction services, energy savings, testing, and maintenance. Founded in 1922 by William F. Lindbergh and located in St. Paul, find out more information on People's Electric Company at www.peoplesco.com. Wildcat Athletics is proudly supported by the Ryan Company, the Hickey Family, U.S. Bank, the Loeffler Companies, Cone U.S., and the Opus Group. Bring it back into St. Paul. The three-point shooting in the second half has been the story. Gustavus is 5 of 6 shooting the three. The Wildcats 1 of 9, so they've missed their 
first three until that last one by Taylor Johnson. So Gustavus made five of their six second half three pointers. 55, uh, 51, pardon me, to 44 your scores. We welcome you back. Gustavus leading St. Kate's in a crit critical game. Wildcats three and four in the MIAC. Gustavus four and three in that very busy middle portion of the uh, conference standings in the MIAC. 500 will probably squeak you into that last seed. And there's going to be a host of teams chasing it down right to the very last week. Lee, the game's leading scorer, has it. As Clark deflected the pass from Gustafson, she was trying to get it into the post, deflected it out of bounds. It'll stay with Gustavus with eight minutes to go. 51 to 44. Three on the way, that's way off. Air ball, three seconds left on the shot clock. Shot goes up and no good. Radford the rebound. Put back was just a bit short out of the hands of Gonzarowski. I mentioned he's a good rebounder. Clark almost lost the ball, almost lost her footing, got them both back. Cam Bryce to the elbow, spinning, driving, and scoring off of the window. That's a big bucket. Wildcats get the stop, and Cam Bryce scores. She has 15. Anybody's game with 7.30 to go just that quickly. 5-0 run from St. Kate's. Lee. For Wagner. Wagner drives and got fouled. Layup off, but Wagner to the free throw line to shoot two. The foul is against Benjamin. The freshman called for her fourth foul. Two shots upcoming for Wagner. She misses her first. Thompson's going to come in with those four fouls and give a breather to Rickert. 7.18 to go. Foul situation. Cambrai still has the three. Rickert, uh, pardon me, Thompson has four. Wagner goes one to two from the free throw line. She's got three points. And with 7.18 to go, a 5-1 to one run for the Wildcats. This is anyone's game. Orth thought about a three instead. There she goes, drives, lays it up and in. Good take by Sam Orth, who now has eight points. It's a four-point game. Wildcats have trailed by as many as ten in this second half. Now just by four. We'll cross over where Gonzarowski into the corner. This is a long two. No good. Cambrice won the rebound and got fouled. In the process, third foul of the third quarter for Gustavus is also the third for Marnie Wagner, who's going to go run back to the bench. Gabby Bolin will come in. And Paige Rickert as well. Gustafson to the bench for Gustavus. Radford got it to Cambrice, got free and scored. Thompson guarding her with those four fouls. Didn't have much of a chance against Donica, who now has 17 points. Lori Kelly has to take a timeout. Cambrice has carried the Wildcats back to within two in, the, in this fourth quarter. 6.20 to go, 52-50 the score. Gustavus by two, and it's anyone's game in St. Paul. You're listening to Wildcat basketball. Stay tuned, buckle up. It's going to be a close finish. As a family-owned and operated business since 1971, Goodmanson Construction continues to develop concrete relationships with their commercial and residential customers throughout the Upper Midwest. Questions or concerns about concrete, asphalt, and the company's installation process, check out their website at GoodmansonConstruction.com. Thank you, Goodmanson Construction. Well, the story of this fourth quarter has been Donica Cambrace has really come on. And her latest bucket has brought the Wildcats to within two. Gustavus with the ball coming out of the Lori Kelly timeout. Kelly in her seventh season at Gustavus. Don Mulhern in his second. 6-18 to go. From sunny St. Paul. On this Saturday afternoon. I think everybody thought this was going to be a close game. On paper, these two teams 
look a lot like each other. Hink drives, goes into the corner. Three for Bolin on the way. That's a big shot. And it's the first one for Bolin in the ball game. And the hot three-point shooting for Gustavus continues. They're up by five. Clark. Now Cam Bryce with it. Johnson. Orth. Seen this before. Pump fake. Drive. Kick. Cam Bryce steps back. Three, tough shot, no good. Red for the rebound, but it's an air ball and a shot clock violation. Wildcats come up empty-handed on that possession, and they'll have five minutes and 21 seconds left to pull off this comeback. They'll need some defense along the way. Tried a little backcourt pressure, but not much of it. Lee into the front court. Down low. Ball came loose for a second there, but Thompson was able to pull it back in. Lee's been there, Gustavus' best offensive player this afternoon. She's guarded by Johnson. Now Thompson, defended by Radford. Bolin tried to get it down low, it's picked off by Johnson. Great work for St. Kate's defensively. They get the stop. Johnson finds Clark in the front court. She bumps, no foul was called. Ouch. Clark got rear-ended by Bolin. And no whistle. Lee is stuck in the backcourt, wants help, and... Oh, they're going to call a timeout. They're going to let's see if they're going to give this timeout to Lori Kelly. You can hear Don Mulhern. Oh, they are going to call a timeout for Gustavus. The whistle came out when the ball was in midair, flying towards the bleachers, and Lee was trapped in the backcourt. I think Don Mulhern has issue to get an explanation for that one. Can only hope the official was tardy getting the whistle up to his mouth for that timeout. Otherwise. Gustavus got bailed out. 441 left, 55-50. Proud sponsor of Wildcat Athletics since all the way back in 1971, the Universal Athletic Team has been passionate about fueling the dreams of athletes, and they put all their know-how into doing just that. By servicing and selling athletic gear to local athletes, high schools, and colleges, Universal Athletic has dedicated its heart and soul to the support of sports, fitness, and health programs in schools and communities. Well, a bit of a, not a controversial call, but Don Muller just gave the official a thumbs up, so the explanation must have been to his approval out of the Gustavus timeout. Gustavus will have 20 seconds to work with on their shot clock and a five-point lead. Wildcats trying to pull off a comeback and get this conference record back to even. And they get the turnover. The Wildcats are getting all the defense they need. Bradford for Kerchek to the rack. Had her shot blocked. Got it back out for Cam Bryce. She spun. Got it for Radford now. Wildcats will take a deep breath. And go to work offensively with the veteran Clark calling the signal. She goes to her left hand. Hands it off for Donica, the go-to player in the second half. Oh, she had her shot blocked. And it's a turnover. Wildcats again come up empty-handed offensively. Wildcats will continue to pressure. They'll have... And this time Clark tried to come around Lee and in the process bumped her. So the foul against St. Kate's is their second and the second against Clark. Anzarowski comes back in. And those players like Gonzarowski are so cr critical late in games that take care of the ball, that can rebound. Here comes a pass. Lee got behind the defense and scored. She lost Orth. She lost Clark. And Lee now with 22 points to lead all scores. Pushes the Gustavus lead to seven. Clark, short two, no good. Loose ball. Orth wins it. Kicks outside for Kerchek. Radford, why not? Three-pointer. Get in there. Got it. Big shot for Jackie Radford, who doesn't put up great numbers shooting the three, but it seems like in close games late, she's money in the bank. Knocks down the big shot. 3.38 to go. Timeout on the floor. It's a four-point game. You're listening to Wildcat Basketball. Transporting Wildcat athletes is in the capable hands of Northfield Lines Incorporated. Dedicated to ensuring that your travel experience is a positive one. Call to request a quote or to make a reservation at 888-670-8068 or visit their website at northfieldlines.com. 
Twin Cities Orthopedics offers a full spectrum of orthopedic care to individuals suffering sports-related problems and injuries. Their doctors are team physicians for St. Catharines University as well as Augsburg University, Hamlin University, and others around the state of Minnesota. Visit TCOMN.com and thank you to Twin Cities Orthopedics. You'll save us with the basketball as we welcome you back in three minutes and 30 seconds to go in this very close game between two evenly matched teams. 57-53 lead for Gustavus, 14 seconds on their shot clock. Bolin now worked around for Thompson, playing with those four fouls. Mismatch against Kerchek. She kicks up top. Lee, pump fake, lost or too strong on the jumper. Rebound, Clark. Just a four-point game. Clark gets bumped the whole way up the floor, and finally, mercifully, a foul is called. Gabby Bolin called for her fourth foul. And it is the fourth against Gustavus in the fourth quarter. That's an Andra Clark special. And she puts it in about third gear until she hits half court and then normally drops it down into first, second gear and tries to draw that cheapy little foul. And that time she got the whistle. So down by four. Wildcats with the ball. Clark again trying to create some contact. Found Cambrace open under the basket and she got hammered. And the foul is going to go against Rickard. It's going to send Cambrace to the free throw line with a chance to make this already close game and even more of a nail-biter. Third foul against Rickard, fifth for Gustavus. That means the Wildcats are in the bonus. And big free throws coming up for Donica. Made the first one, just barely. Big heavy rattle off of the front end of the iron. But Cambrice now with 18. And Cambrice, much better on the second one. Nothing but the bottom of the net. 19 points for Donica. Three minutes to go in the game. 57 to 55. Big shot by Radford, that three-pointer. And Clark continues to set up this offense, finding Cambrice on that last position. That one rolled over to Lee. Not a great pass, but she's able to work it for Thompson in the corner. Now Wagner, harassed by Kerchek, chasing her down. Thompson, double team, drive baseline. Kicks corner, driving, and Cambrice is going to get called for the foul. Gonzarowski did that little move I was just talking about where she got past Cambrice, kind of slammed on those brakes and drew the contact from number 11 from behind. Gonzarowski to the free throw line, 66% on the season. First high arcing free throw is short. She struggled there today at her third miss from the free throw line. And these are big ones. Makes her second. Six points for Gonzarowski, 58 to 55. Clark for Cambrice, outside for Kerchek. Got to think it's going to be the Cambrice and Clark show the rest of the way offensively. Clark, three, leaned into it, no good. Rebound, Kerchek, that's a big offensive board. New life for the Wildcats, down by three. Down low, or through traffic, layup no good. Loose ball, Dusty's come up with it. That's a big rebound for Kendall Thompson. In transition we go, Wagner barely kept her, her footing and now Lori Kelly hollers out to her team. What's the rush as Clark hits the deck. It's Davis, no whistle. Thompson guarded by Cambrace, drives in off the left side, into the corner for the game's leading scorer, Lee. She goes the other way with it. Down low, Rickard, shot short, rebound Orth. Three-point game, and Lori Kelly calls for her Gusties to get back and defend. Wildcats can cut it to one with a two, tie it with a three. Bradford drives, backpedals, Clark now with it. Down low, Cambrice against Lee! Layup no good, but drew the foul. Oh, that would have been a biggie if Cambrice could have finished it off. But she'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. The clock stops with a minute 13 left in the game. And more big free throws coming up for Donica, who made her last two. So Cambrice back to the line with the Cats down by three. First shot's good. 20 now for Cambrice. And Cambrice knocks them both down. Boy, big free throws. Cambrice. 
in the late stages of this fourth quarter has been very good from the free throw line. Brings the Wildcats to within one, 58-57, the new score. Hink in. Wagner out for the Gusties. Wildcats need defense here, down by one. Anzarowski to the left side with it. Thompson drives. Radford comes up with the basketball, but before that, a whistle against number 15 in the white jersey. That's Jackie Radford's second foul, and it sends Thompson to the free throw line. Better her than Paige Rickard, who makes 90% of them on the season or thereabouts. So Thompson to the stripe, and she clanks her first. Boy, the Wildcats are getting the better of the free throw line battle. Gonzorowski missed one, now Thompson misses her first, and Cambrice has been so good from the line. Second shot, no good! Empty trip to the free throw line for Thompson and a rebound for Radford. Wildcats down by one with the basketball. Clark to the rack, pump fake, score! Clark with a dozen, Wildcats lead it, 59-58. We've trailed big in the second half. Clark and Cambrice and Radford have brought the Wildcats back into this thing. 36 seconds to go, Gustavus with the ball, in the corner with it. Pump fake, Gonzorowski, Wagner up top. Wildcats will play a switch, back up top we go. Gonzorowski dishes down low. Rickard, Lee, Thompson three, short. Rebound, loose ball is out of bounds. And no signal, and we've got two Wildcats down, and it looked like diving for that loose ball, it was Clark and Orth that collided with one another. And they really collided, diving for that loose ball. So the two teams will head back to their corners. I didn't see a signal of whose ball this is going to be out of this timeout, if it was going to be Gustavus ball or Wildcat ball. Orth is up, and it looks like she's okay. She definitely took a nasty collision and gets a high five from the coaching staff. Looks like she's okay. Faustus will come in, so the Wildcats will lose a little bit of size. And it is going to be Gustavus ball. They're down by one. There's 20 seconds to go. And again, free throw shooting has been the difference down the stretch here. Wildcats have made theirs. Gustavus has struggled from the line. Pass comes in. Thompson goes over Cambrace to get it. No shot clock. 18 seconds left on the game clock. Thompson drives. Lost it. Wildcat ball! Timeout on the floor. Don Mulhern wants the timeout. He'll get it. Wildcats up by one with 14 to go. Let's break with the players when we come back. The conclusion of this very exciting 40 minutes of basketball. You're listening to Wildcat Basketball on tjsportsonline.net. For exceptional service and selection, look no further than Fury Motors in St. Paul. They're the number one family-owned dealer to buy a Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge or Ram since all the way back in 1963. So much to choose from and they make the shopping process easy. Also offering genuine service and financing. Visit stpaul.furymotors.com for more information. People's Electric Company is your full service electrical contractor. One of the upper Midwest's largest. From building and process automation, communications, construction services, energy savings, testing, and maintenance. Founded in 1922 by William F. Lindbergh and located in St. Paul, find out more information on People's Electric Company at www.peoplesco.com. Wildcats trailed by 10 heading into this fourth quarter. Right now they lead it by one, 59 to 58. Cats on top, Kerchek, Clark, Johnson, Radford, and Cambrice are the five that Don Mulhern will send out there with the trusted Radford ready to inbound. Good. 
Radford will give it a heave into the front court. Cambrice has got to chase it down. She does. Cambrice layup. Good and the foul! Wow! Jackie Radford plays quarterback, throws it into the front court. Cambrice chases it down. Draws the foul from Lee. Makes the basket. And one. Wow! Wildcats go on top by three. Cambrice can make it a two-bucket game. And she knocks it down. Boy, Donica from the free throw line down the stretch has been just too good. Wildcats go up by four. 62 to 58 with a dozen seconds to go. Let's break and come back from St. Paul. Wildcat Athletics is proudly supported by the Ryan Company, the Hickey Family, U.S. Bank, the Loeffler Companies, Cone U.S., and the Opus Group. Wildcat supporters this season also include Shapco Printing, Sedexo, Terra General Contractors, the O'Neill Group, ProTech Designs, and Floors by Becker. Other Wildcat sponsors include McGough Construction, the DLR Group, Push Pedal and Pull, the Newman Family, Sava Tree, Jimmy John's, and Munchie's Frozen Yogurt. As a family owned and What a game, what a game. It's not over yet, but the Wildcats are up by four with 12 seconds to go. Behind Audra Clark, Donica Cambrice, and the right arm of Jackie Radford. That was a doozy of a play out of that timeout to get that and one. Now out of that timeout, Gustavus can advance the basketball. They choose to do just that, of course. But with some defense, the Wildcats can get this record back up to 500 in conference play. 62-58 the score. Pass comes in quickly. Because Davis needs to work quick. They do get a long three off. It's no good. Kerchek the rebound. She's fouled right away. And with six seconds to go, a four-point lead and a long walk to the free throw line. Things are looking good for the Wildcats here. Late in the fourth quarter on their home floor. Stay tuned for our Wildcat postgame show. We'll be joined by a student athlete. First shot's good for Kerchak. 63 to 58 now. And Kerchak makes them both. What a trip to the free throw line for Kerchak who has five points. Timeout on the floor. We'll keep it right here with six seconds to go. What an effort by St. Kate's to close this game out. Great effort by St. Kate's. Here in this fourth quarter, again, stay tuned to our post-game show. Sounds like we'll be joined by Audra Clark if the Wildcats can finish off these last six seconds or so. Right now they're up 64 to 58 with just six seconds left in the ballgame in the Gustavus timeout. But unbelievable, they trailed by 10 at the start of this fourth quarter. And since then, they got it going with Cambrice, Radford, and Clark, and the free throws. Remember, Gustavus missed a few down the line. Gonzarowski uh, missed a few, and I think Thompson missed one as well, whereas the Wildcats didn't miss from that free throw line. Unbelievable effort. Six seconds to go. It would take something very bizarre for overtime in this game. Long three-pointer is no good. Loose ball. And the final buzzer with Audra Clark hanging on to it. And you can put this one into the books. The Wildcats win. 64 to 58. That was one heck of a basketball game. Let's break and come back with our Wildcat postgame show. Unbelievable win for the Wildcats.
Operated business since 1971, Goodmanson Construction continues to develop concrete relationships with their commercial and residential customers throughout the Upper Midwest. Questions or concerns about concrete, asphalt, and the company's installation process, check out their website at GoodmansonConstruction.com. Thank you, Goodmanson Construction. Wildcat postgame show is back as we welcome you back into St. Paul as the Wildcats win in a thriller, 64 to 58. The final score, Wildcats led by Donica Cambrace in her 25 points. The Wildcats improved their record overall to 7 and 8 on the season. They are now uh, at an even 500, 4 and 4 in the MIAC through their first eight games. For Gustavus, they fall to 7 and 8 overall. And they join the Wildcats at 500 through eight games in the MIAC at four and four. Next up for the Wildcats, they go on the road for two games next week at St. Ben's and at McAllister before coming home to play a very good Augsburg team and at St. Olaf the week after that. But my goodness, what a game for St. Kate's. They showed that never give up attitude and were able to close this thing out and win it comfortably at the end. It looked like a game that if the Wildcats were going to win, it was going to take overtime or something dramatic, but really in the end, not a lot of drama as their clutch free throw shooting puts the game away. 64 to 58, your final score. Be joined in just a moment here by Audra Clark. Actually, you can see her along the way there. Actually, she's heading down the tunnel, so maybe no Audra Clark joining us in our post-game show. 64-58, your final score. The Wildcats win a big one in dramatic fashion. Let's break, let's break for just a moment, and uh, when we come back, we'll be joined by a Wildcat, either coach or player. You're listening to Wildcat Basketball. As a family-owned and operated business since 1971, Goodmanson Construction continues to develop concrete relationships with their commercial and residential customers throughout the Upper Midwest. Questions or concerns about concrete, asphalt, and the company's installation process, check out their website at GoodmansonConstruction.com. Thank you, Goodmanson Construction. A proud sponsor of Wildcat Athletics since all the way back in 1971, the Universal Athletic Team has been passionate about fueling the dreams of athletes, and they put all their know-how into doing just that. By servicing and selling athletic gear to local athletes, high schools, and colleges, Universal Athletic has dedicated its heart and soul to the support of sports, fitness, and health programs in schools and communities. Transporting Wildcat athletes is in the capable hands of Northfield Lines Incorporated. Dedicated to ensuring that your travel experience is a positive one. Call to request a quote or to make a reservation at 888-670-8068 or visit their website at northfieldlines.com. Twin Cities Orthopedics offers a full spectrum of orthopedic care to individuals suffering sports-related problems and injuries. Their doctors are team physicians for St. Catharines University as well as Augsburg University, Hamlin University, and others around the state of Minnesota. Visit TCOMN.com and thank you to Twin Cities Orthopedics. For exceptional service and selection, look no further than Fury Motors in St. Paul. They're the number one family-owned dealer to buy a Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, or Ram since all the way back in 1963. So much to choose from, and they make the shopping process easy. Also offering genuine service and financing. Visit stpaul.furymotors.com for more information. All right, with that, we're going to put a bow on this one from the Butler Center. We had hoped to hear from either a coach or player, but it seems that they made their way on into the locker room, and uh, right now they're going to do their thing, and we respect that because they earned it. It was a big game and a big win, 64-58, to 58, your final score. Cam Bryce, buckets and free throws down the way. What a pass from Radford. What a job by Cam Bryce to chase down that pass into the front court and get the three-point play. The game winner was Audra Clark, 59-58. She made it with her left-handed uh, layup.
Cambrai's free throws down the way put this thing on ice along with Kerchek and 64 to 58. Your final score: Wildcats improved to uh, seven and eight overall, four and four in the MIAC. The Gusties fall to seven and eight, and they are now four and four as well in the MIAC. This thing is going to be down to the wire for those last few seeds into the MIAC playoffs, and it's going to be an exciting run all throughout the rest of January and February as well. Our engineer today has been Glenn Thompson, the hardworking one here to my right. I'm Matt Nelson. Thanks for spending a part of your weekend with us from the Butler Center. Until we talk again, our next broadcast from the Butler Center will be on January 23rd, a 7 o'clock tip-off on a Wednesday night as the Wildcats host Augsburg. Until we talk again, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and go Cats!